guys, welcome back to my channel. It is time to finally finish this raincoat. I hope you can see me and hear me clearly because it is raining so hard today. It has been raining for days and I need this raincoat, so it is time to finish it. There are only a few steps remaining in order for me to get this done. The outside of the coat is finished. I did a lot of work off camera. I made the entire lining off camera because it's literally the same as making the coat, just in a different fabric. So what we need to do now, what I need to do now, is to insert the lining into the coat. We need to attach the buttons. We need to make the belt. So that's what we're gonna do starting today. It's gonna be difficult to film in this lack of daylight, but I put a candle on. You can hear the rain pattering on the roof, which is lovely. Let's get started with that. I have my coat here, the outside of my coat, and I did follow your guys' advice and uh, seal all the seams. I ended up going back and doing the underside of the arms, around the armholes and everything. I do feel like maybe for a pattern that has this many curves, that sealant tape that I used might not have been the best option. I feel like it would be absolutely perfect on straight seams, but it doesn't perform as well on very heavy curves. I feel like it's a bit too stiff to really work with uh, a curved seam. So in places like around the arms and uh, here around the waist where there's a pretty steep curve, it has a tendency to come loose a little bit. It is what it is. I think it'll still work just fine. But something to keep in mind if you are planning to do something like this as well. I also have the ghost version, uh, which is my lining. I ended up getting this uh, very inexpensive <laughs> lining fabric to use for my lining and the front panel is made of the same waterproof raincoat fabric as the outside. This is what it says in the pattern, but if it didn't do so, I would have done this anyway, just because this is the part that overlaps, the buttons will be inserted into here. This bit is just gonna be under a bit more stress than the rest of the coat. Yeah, you want this to be made of the nice fabric as well. With the hood and everything, it's all complete. So I'm gonna check the instructions, see how they want me to insert this, and then we can finally get to actually sewing. <laughs> I have pinned the lining to the actual coat right sides together. So I have my sealed seams here and my ghost coat with all its seams on the inside. I pinned the sides together, the facing to the front and also the hood. Now normally this would be a detachable hood so this is not in the instructions but obviously if I want to close this at some point I think now's the time. Once this is sewn up I will be able to flip it inside out through the bottom. Then I will adjust the sleeves or I put the sleeves in the right place and then I will have to do the hemming by hand. And I remember from the last time I made this coat, this took forever and I hated doing it. So that's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but we'll get through it. For now, I think I'm just gonna start by sewing up the sides here and then I'll show you how I flip this inside out and I'll use my wider um, angle lens so you can actually see the whole thing. It's attached, so here we go. I'm gonna go to the bottom, separate the lining from the outside and flip it inside out. <laughs> it's gigantic. Definitely not bad. Push in the sleeves. It looks like an actual real coat. Let's try it on. Oh my gosh, I love it. Obviously I'm gonna have to iron these edges, but oh, it's so good. And the hood is really nicely finished now. Yes, I love it. It's so princessy. 
and pockets. Okay, needless to say, I am very excited about this, but we're not quite there yet. So what I need to do still is close up this bit right here. I wasn't quite sure what would happen if I closed this uh, while it was turned inside out. I was a bit worried that this bit of the hood might stick out, but I don't think it will. I think it's fine actually. So I can just flip it inside out again and just sew this shut. I think that would be easier than trying to whip stitch it from the outside and more waterproof in any case. Yeah, then I'm gonna have to iron the sides here. Yay! <laughs> I finished the hems on the sleeves and I finally understood what I'm supposed to do here. It just clicked in my brain. You just fold over the hem on the outside fabric by one and a half centimeters. Then you flip the whole thing inside out. Then you fold over just a little bit of the hem of the lining and then you slip stitch the two together so that it's kind of, it's a clean edge against a clean edge. But then when you do that, the lining actually ends up a little bit longer than that. So it folds over, it folds back over towards the outside and that gives you uh, a little bit more room and a bit more movement on the inside of the coat and you want that. And I understood that last time, I just wasn't sure how to get to that point, but this is, this is it. It's really simple. So now I just need to do it to the entire bottom of the hem and I did just go around and um, cut off any bits that were uneven, so the hem should pretty much be just one circle right now. Oh, I did just realize, I think these bits, the, the facing and the outside, I probably need to do those turned inside out, just sew them with the sewing machine. So maybe I should do that first actually, and then move on to the hemming. And then we can do the buttons. And I'm really excited about that because I have no idea how to do it, but we'll learn today. <laughs> I got about half the hem done. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work hand sewing a huge hem like this. It's looking good so far, the bit that I have finished. And I think I'm just gonna do the rest of it in front of the TV tonight, um, off camera, because it's not the most interesting thing. And it's taking all of the time I had today. So we need to move on to do these buttons because I'm never gonna get to it if I don't do it now. What I have here are these anorak buttons. They are push buttons. I need to somehow attach these to my coat and it comes with kind of instructions and an applicator. There are two sides. You have your, your snappy bit and your top bit. Oh, logistics. Okay, so this is for the top of the button. One of these bits, which is a button top, goes in here. One of these. Yeah, a little thing with wires inside and that goes on here. So then you close that up, hammer this shut and that forms the top part of the snap button. Oh man. Okay, so that's good. And then for the bottom part, you use the other two applicators. Okay, I think I just have to go ahead and try it. Also, I'm fairly sure first you're supposed to make a hole and that is something I did not consider. Does it come with a hole punch? Oh, it's a pad for underneath, that's nice. And it does come with a hole punch. Maybe a good first step would be to actually mark out where the buttons are gonna go on the coat. Let's do that. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is absolutely nerve-wracking, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start with the bottom buttons, like the, the ones that you close the snap on, just so that in case I mess up, at least it's on the inside of the garment. <laughs> on both sides, I need to make a hole. Okay, this thingy goes under when I make the hole. Here goes nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> I think this table might be too bouncy. I'm gonna have to move to the floor probably. Yeah, that didn't do anything. I'm gonna have to move to the floor. Try there. How does it work? I'm gonna just have to make a really ugly hole with nail scissors or something. I remember when I was making stays, one of those like hole punchers came with the grommet set as well and it didn't work. Obviously, because this just... <laughs> There's no way this can work. Maybe I don't even have to cut it. I can just do the thing I do when I do actually make grommets, like eyelets, and just kind of push it open. Get some knitting needles. Okay. So then, in comes the bottom of the snap. And then the snappy bit to the top here. Oh, oh man. I think maybe I should just poke this through this hole first. That's good, the size is good. Sits in there nicely. And then this thing goes in, snappy part up, into this bit. I close it up. <sighs> now we just smack this. And it probably needs to be good on the first try or I ruined the whole thing. Maybe I need to do this, not on the bouncy table. Anyway, let's check, let's check what it looks like. Not bad, it's not super flush. I think it could stand a few more hits, but it's on, it looks great. The buttons are in and I love them. I love how they look. This is such a nice color combination with the pink. They're very elegant, very feminine. Exactly goes with the look I was going for for this coat. So I'm very, very happy with that. I got the hang of it pretty quickly. It wasn't actually hard to do at all. And I'm just really excited that the coat now closes. <laughs> I do have a few buttons left. I only ended up accidentally ruining one of them. So I have a couple left um, that are still functional. So I could potentially add more maybe towards the bottom of the coat if I feel like it opens up too much or even in between here on the top if I feel like it needs, you know, more buttons, like there's too much space here. But for now, for now we're good and I'm very happy with it. So one last thing I want to do today is to make the belt. I almost completely forgot about the belt because I didn't cut out the pattern yet. Um, but I do have quite a few 
long and thin scraps left that I think I could piece together to make a decent belt to go with this. And I'm planning on making this very simple, just a straight up strip of fabric that is just gonna be tied around the waist with a knot. I'm not gonna do a buckle or anything like that. So this should be really quick to do. Let's get started. It's done, it's wet, it works. <laughs> now, obviously I haven't tested it thoroughly yet. I did just stand out in the rain, but I haven't actually worn it yet because I just finished it. But, oh my gosh, guys, I am so excited. Looks wise, it is exactly what I hoped for. So feminine, it's, it's like a princess raincoat in the best way possible. I love the color of it. I love that it sparkles ever so subtly, which you probably won't be able to see most of the time in the rain because then there's no direct sunlight that's okay <laughs> i know that it sparkles in certain lighting and i absolutely love it oh the shape of this coat it's so unique you, you don't really find these coats anywhere except for that one place online where i found them <laughs> that inspired me to make this in the first place but it's definitely not super common and i just absolutely adore it i will for sure be wearing this in my daily life as well. I do feel like maybe this is more of a walking in the rain coat rather than cycling in the rain. As much of an effort as I did make to waterproof it as much as possible, some things just didn't work out the way I had hoped. I tried several things to um, close the hood and I think in the end maybe a drawstring would be the best but also I'm not sure just because this hood is so big I'm not entirely sure that a drawstring would be the best and most flattering, I guess, way to make this closed. I tried to maybe put a push button here so that it's a bit tighter around the face, but then you get this huge gap um, here where my hair is coming out now. It would need more fabric here and close a little bit higher um, in order for that to work or maybe even overlap. So basically, I just, I just don't really know what to do with the hood. And for just smaller distances, it's fine like this. It covers my face. That's what it's supposed to do. But yeah, as soon as there's a lot of wind, I will have to hold it. So I think I will just have to live with the coat for a little bit to figure out what I want from this hood and how I can adjust it 
to function better in actual like windy conditions. For now, I'm just, I'm just very, very happy with this coat. I think we can call it done for now. I am just really proud of myself for actually making this. It was a pretty big undertaking, uh, a lot of hurdles, a lot of things I've never done before, a lot of things I was very nervous about going into this, but I think I think I did a good job. I really love the outcome and I cannot wait to start wearing this. I am also so pleased with the way these buttons came out. They are just, oh, they're just gorgeous, gorgeous. I think this concludes the sparkly pink raincoat project, at least for the time being. So I really hope you enjoyed coming on this journey with me. Thank you so much for being here, guys. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be updated on all of the other things I'm still gonna make. If you would like to support me through Patreon, there's a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. It really helps me be able to keep running this channel. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much once again for being here, guys, and I will see you very soon in my next video. <laughs> Bye.